What would you do if you went on a seemingly innocent trip to the river, was kidnapped by a mermaid, and then brought back 40 years later? Get your popcorn. back YouTube and if you are new here hello my name is Noah I'm your hostess with the most this and on my channel we talk about death true crime spiritual reparations haunted people places and things and how you can fuck around and find out if you are not subscribed here I invite you to you should and if you are not following me over on TikTok I definitely recommend my apologies if my voice goes in and out I am fighting a cold that I can't seem to get rid of so if my voice sounds like somebody's baby brother going through puberty please bear with me on today's episode we're going to be discussing a couple of cases and watching a couple of TikTok videos about how people were kidnapped by mermaids but brought back now, if you've been here for a while, you know that the mermaid is our resident villain here on my channel. And we always hear parakis about how someone's someone got kidnapped by a mermaid. And a lot of them end in tragedy where you never hear or see them again. But a lot of them talk about how that relative returned. And if you happen to clue what I'm talking about, mermaids are real. A lot of things are real and they like to kidnap people for fun and make them into slaves. They are just miscreants of the sea sometimes. They are literally sirens. What you think a mermaid is? I'm not talking about Ariel. It's not that. But I've taught y'all that. So go back and watch a couple of my videos. My last video that was based out of Zimbabwe definitely ruffled a couple of feathers over on TikTok. So this story is also based out of Zimbabwe. Actually, it's a couple of stories in one. And it ruffled feathers because they thought I was talking about one thing and I was not. I was talking about something else. But I still love my Zimbabwe brothers and sisters and the country and the culture and what I've learned just researching. I'm definitely going to be in y'all neck of the woods one day. I want to come see the waterfalls and experience all that beautifulness. So, if you feel like something that I said is incorrect, please let me know because at the end of the day, a lot of these videos that I'm studying, they're not in English. A lot of the articles, I have to go to Google Translate. So just give me some grace. I'm a lost African trying to find out her history. So y'all just chill because baby, them comments on TikTok, not only were they loud and wrong, some of them were offensive to my African-American lost Africans who ancestors were just slower runners than some of the African people. So let's just lead with love, compassion, empathy, even if you can't really empathize with what African Americans have gone through. We don't know our history. We're still learning. If I mispronounce any of the names, the countries, please, cities, just please, Help me out. Once upon a time, not long ago, and when I say not long ago, I mean in 2020, a eight year old girl was returned to her village in Zimbabwe after being missing for 40 years. And she was the same age as she was when she went missing. This happened in Wanisi, Zimbabwe. An eight year old girl 40 some odd years ago, went to a river to go fishing with her family. I'm assuming the girl was the baby of the family. She went fishing with her brother's wives and some other man who was not related to her. As they were about to leave, the girl caught a small fish and fishes, they're flipping and flopping when you take them out of water. So she dropped the fish. And she went back to the river as everyone was packing up to clean the dirt off of the fish. And she just disappeared. 
into thin air. After a thorough search of the area, police assumed that a crocodile got her. But family wasn't so convinced of that. The family went to traditional healers, had their divination done, and was told not to hold a funeral for this girl. That the mermaids had her and she was not dead. Let's just pause for a second because according to what I've seen online and read online, and correct me if I'm wrong, my Zimbabwe people, um, whenever someone is presumed kidnapped by mermaids, it is normal or in tradition not to have a funeral. So this is something that is normal to them because so many people have been kidnapped. So before we start to judge in the comments, just know that this is tradition. Family brought in several different traditional healers and several different healers all told them the same thing and started to give them directions on what to do every year, multiple times out of the year to bring their baby girl back safely. And the family kept up with it. For 40 years, they did traditional rituals to appease the mermaids, to bring their baby home. But while they were doing this, weird occurrences started to happen. Misfortune started to happen to this family as they were appeasing the spirits and trying to bring baby girl back to them. The girl would manifest as a full apparition in front of her family asking them almost begging them to come and get her pause again because see in american culture if we see a spirit of someone who is missing we presume them as dead okay that is just law here but to them that was their kind of wake-up call or like confirmation that she was still alive and the mermaids were holding her hostage. During the time that this little girl was missing, the family was going through it, like financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically. It seemed like they couldn't do anything right, but it is said that the reason why it wasn't working is because they did not find the right traditional healer. After years and years and years of seeing this full body apparition of their child, going through traditional healers and traditional rituals to appease spirit and try to bring the girl back, they finally found the right person to do the job. The little girl walked home. She walked straight into her village and straight to her family. And when journalists and news outlets caught wind of this, they ran down to her village. They saw this child but were not allowed to film her. That was, that was one thing that the family and traditional healers wanted to make very, very clear. You can look, but do not photograph, do not film. The CEO of Wenenzi Rural District Council, his name was Albert Novolo. I know I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. He was at the welcome home ceremony for the little girl and he was in shock. He had never seen anything like this. All the little girls, villagers, neighbors, everyone who was probably in their 40s when she arrived back but were children when she, you know, disappeared, were so happy to see her. Councilman Albert spoke to the media and told them like, this is legit. This is the little girl that disappeared. 40 years ago. He also said that the countryside in Zimbabwe as a whole was a very spiritual place and strange occurrences happen like this, but usually the person that is kidnapped is presumed dead. And it's only because the mermaids never bring them back. A chiefsman also was at the celebration and his name was Chief Nagari. And he also said this was real. It wasn't a hoax. It wasn't the family trying to get attention or anything like that. And that this was very rare for someone to come back after being kidnapped by mermaids. So we have two very high ranking community members saying this is real. And that's what like blew my mind. These people are saying Y'all can fuck around and find out if y'all go next to that water for too long, unattended, whatever. Keep keep your kids safe because you don't want 
for your kid to get kidnapped and 40 years later when you're at the end of your life when you're elderly you're welcoming your child back and you're you're trying to catch up for lost time that's what really blew me with this story being so sensational a year later the news outlet that reported all of this or one of them went back to check on the mermaid girl and of course her neighbors who were fascinated and i presume wanted clout told the media that she was a little weird she only ate millet which is like a grain but her family was like no that's not true they also said that she was unable to talk which kind of goes hand in hand of what i've taught y'all about mermaids Sometimes the people come back with red hair, freckles, and a mute. But her sister-in-law, someone who was married to one of her older brothers, confirmed that that was a lie. She could talk and she eats regular food. The neighbors also said that she was living with the traditional healer that healed her, which also was not true. And the neighbors thought this because sometime after she returned, she kind of like disappeared. They didn't know where she was. But the sister-in-law cleared that rumor up as well. It said that she went to live with her brother and then she went back to her father's house. So when I say the rumor mill around the community was rumoring, it was spinning, it was so many misconceptions about what had happened to this girl. A month later, one of the news reporters that was following up on this story was able to catch up with the mermaid girl. And the cameraman said that when he tried to film the mermaid girl, because I don't know her name, I'm sorry. But when they tried to film her, the camera just mysteriously stopped working. It's also said in this interview that when she returned, she came out of the sand and was completely nude. And the dam that she disappeared in had dried up. It's all mud and sand. It doesn't exist anymore. And this may sound strange to anyone that doesn't do African traditional healing outside of this community, but apparently this is normal for them. This is crazy, y'all. And this is not the only story. Now, this occurrence was a little bit different than the eight-year-old that returned because this was a 26-year-old woman who was said to be possessed by a mermaid spirit and jumped into a mermaid infested river. The river is called Miami, and I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong, river, and it's in Zimbabwe. And this woman went there for a cleansing ceremony. It is believed that she was possessed by a mermaid spirit, became erratic, violent, and then jumped into the water. And everyone, was afraid to get in the water with her because something snatched her underneath that water. And the people that witnessed this are gun ho on saying that this was a spirit of some sort. They suspect mermaid, but there's a lot of different spirits in Zimbabwe and Africa as a continent. So what do y'all think, I guess? And in the same year that the little girl was rescued in the same community. Two men were recovered after being missing for 46 years. Is that a pattern I see? And the healer that rescued them spoke to the media and said, not only does she do traditional healing and bringing back people from the mermaids, she also can cure cancer, different ailments, this lady is supposed to be the bee's knees. And I'm wondering, because it's not talked about in the article, if this is the same traditional healer that brought the little girl back. Her name is Daddy Rai. I know I'm saying it wrong. I apologize. But she claims that these two men came to her as full body apparitions, just as the little girl did with her traditional healers. And was trying to contact her so that they could be rescued from the mermaids. Now, it needs to be said that this was over a year later after the little girl was rescued. And it, she said the ritual involved her putting $10,000 into a cloth, a red cloth, and putting it in the river. And if the mermaids took it, then the two men would be returned. 
She then said that she took sand from the river into a cave and prayed to the ancestor spirit guys that these men would be returned. And then out of nowhere, it was a massive hailstorm for days. This healer claimed that she fasted for 12 months in order to do this ritual and that she didn't charge the family the $10,000 because they were underprivileged. That was what she thought the mermaids wanted. That's what spirit told her the mermaids wanted. She only charged them for cows. She performed the ceremony anyway, even though they couldn't afford the cows. And lo and behold, the men emerged from the river completely naked after 46 years. Another occurrence was of a 16-year-old girl who disappeared in a river in a town called Chippenge in Manakalad, and this is also in Zimbabwe. And initially, her family did not report her missing because they believed that she was being initiated into um, high priestesshood, if you will. She was going to come back a high-ranking member of spirituality. And reporting her would compromise her life with the mermaids, or so they believed. Her parents had sent her down to the river to fetch evening water for the family, and she just disappeared. And that area to the locals is known to be infested with mermaids. The family reached out to local traditional healers, and some of the healers believed that they waited too long to report the girl missing, and that they feared that she was dead. They did do rituals for her, such as pouring beer, brewing it, drums. Her immediate family went down to the riverbanks with these traditional healers to try to get her to return safely, but she was never found. The area's president made a formal statement stating that the girl was probably deceased at this point and that she may even be staying underwater for the rest of her life. This shit to the people of Zimbabwe is absolutely 100% real. If you have not noticed, we got presidents and chiefsmen and council members backing what people are saying about the mermaids in Zimbabwe. Like I always tell y'all in my videos, everybody ain't lying. We have a whole continent who are reporting the same thing, not even counting the Caribbean that are saying that mermaids love to kidnap people and act like miscreants. And you have to appease them to get the person back or sometimes you never even get them back. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just here to tell you what was told to me. It wasn't even told to me directly. But what do y'all think? Have y'all heard of any of these stories in Zimbabwe about the mermaids other than what I've told you? And if you have a creepy, weird, mermaid, cryptid, UFO, haunted people, places, and things, or a story about how you, yourself, or somebody else fucked around and find out, found out, I am live on YouTube every Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with our friends over at Bizarre Junkies doing the Calls From Beyond call-in show. And you can call me and talk to me. Call me now. I want to hear it. A special shout out to my patrons and everyone that calls in every week emails me about their haunted experiences. Y'all comment down below of what y'all think of all these stories that I gave y'all. I know it was a lot. It was a lot to take in. But let me know your opinion. Y'all do good, be good, and stay safe.